Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We provide fan-oriented and analytic discussion on a variety of animated shows, movies, and anime. Currently featuring Steven Universe, Miraculous Ladybug, Archer, the new Powerpuff Girls, and others. I'm Melanie Moyer, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stovall. <laughs> hey, Stovall, Stovall. Apparently I say it wrong a lot. I also don't know why I said my whole name. I never say my whole name, but now you know, in case you didn't. Um, we are discussing Kim Possible, and yeah, you can find more about this podcast at overlyanimated.com. We have tried to record this podcast probably like five times now, um, yeah, between schedule, schedule conflicts, technical difficulties, etc. Um, it, we're, this, we're maybe trying to do some kind of like little nostalgia series on stuff like Kim Possible and maybe other sort of mid-2000s animation like Danny Phantom or American Dragon and some others. Um, so still trying to get probably a feel for how those would go. Um, so yeah, I, this is interesting because I don't know if we've ever really talked about an, a show in its entirety before in the past tense. Because um, a lot of our stuff is uh, recapping like as it's happening. Um, so this could be interesting. It's a lot to process, so I'm going to try and break that down. Uh, but first things first, um, you should know what Kim Possible is, but in case you don't, um, it was a animated show that was, like, the thing on Disney, like, in the early slash, it was, like, 2003, I think, to 2005. I should know yeah, that. 2002 like that. to 2007. I was close. Um, but this was, like, the big thing on Disney Channel when I was in, like, middle school and high school. Um... This was, like, the big marketing thing. This was the thing that everyone was watching. This one had all the, like, cool movies. It almost had its own, like, theatrical release movie. But it's basically this show about this girl in high school who saves the world. Um, it's like Buffy if Buffy was animated and a ginger. And instead of vampires, it was, like, comic book bad guys. Um, and she, or her sidekick is her best friend Ron, who's stupid and not good at anything he does Useless. but for some reason she drags him along um it's Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable because that's cute um and yeah it went for I think it was three seasons and then the fourth season was the yeah the yeah fluff. the fluff season literally the which had to, how did that have 22 episodes in the fourth season I don't know, but it was magical. It was a magical time. I swore that was only like a 10 episode season my goodness Wow. Um, so yeah, that's basically the breakdown of what Kim Possible is. Um, I don't think I missed anything. Did I miss anything? No, that's about it. That's about it. So why it's awesome is a broad topic, um, which okay. we've, I guess we kind of broken down or Delaney has broken down into subtopics. Um, so we'll run into that. What was the most notable thing about this show for you? No pressure. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, like, kind of like the whole premise that we have this, because we've had, you know, there's, you know, superhero shows, granted, this is kind of before, like, super, like, there was always a, you know, superheroes come in phases, like, we have, like, right now, it's like, superhero war, like, Marvel versus DC, blah, 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 I mean, it's always been like that, but we yeah, have I was gonna always, say, I think that's always been a thing. It, al it always has, granted, and the comic book industry has been dying for a very long time, but, um, here, this was a period of time where we really hadn't had, um, super like we hadn't really had super and superheroes. Well, it's funny though because Kim Possible isn't a superhero. She's just a regular girl, and she just happens to fight crime. Like, like Batman. She's just very yeah. She's just super athletic, and she doesn't even have that many gadgets. Like she has like her you know blow dryer, and you know she has she has some gadgets. So can I tell you something funny about the blow dryer? Don't well. Oh wait, don't lose your thought. You keep going, but I've got a funny story about the blow dryer. We'll just hold on to the story. It, it's relevant to this because Allie figures in it, actually. <laughs> oh, good. And uh, it's just like this whole premise of, you know, you know, regular girl, and she's in high school. And the thing is, the show isn't just, oh, she goes to high school, but you just see her saving the world. Like, no, a lot of the show actually takes place in high school and just, and, you know, and of course it has, you know, the best best friends, like, falling in love. And, it, and it's just, it has so, it's so comic booky without being, like, annoying. And they never play off that Kim's a girl like Kim just is Kim and it just it's what it just it was in that sweet time in the early 2000s until sweet time it, the, the mid 2000s were actually a good time for a lot of things not fashion it was a magic but... no fashion no <laughs> but, 
but it's a magical time for, especially for Kim Possible, that we had a show like this where you know, you know, main protagonist female, her parents are both doctors, and it's just like super awesome. It's my a, a my premise of it. My hair dryer story is that two years ago I went as Kim Possible for Halloween, and I had hair dye because I'm not a ginger, um, and I went late to the Halloween store to get. Um, a wig and they were out of like the most perfect Kim Possible wig you can imagine and somebody snapped it up because stupid spirit Halloween. But anyway, I was trying to figure out something to wear on my belt to be her grapple gun because I was like, I don't know what to do. Like none of the, like all the guns at, at the Halloween store like look like real guns. Like I don't know how to do this. I can't like fashion one because that's like complicated. And Allie is like, why don't you just use a hair dryer because it's a hair dryer. And I just, like, had this epiphany because I was like, it is a hair dryer! And I just <laughs> grabbed a hair... I had an extra hair dryer and I just literally just very unsafely cut the cord off of it and uh, stuck it in my belt loop. And that was my Halloween costume. So there's that about the hair dryer. Um, it's like a weird mixture of MacGyver and, like... Uh, <laughs> she doesn't make her gadgets, which is, like, yeah. really, like... She, they just show up in her locker a lot because Wade will yeah. just drop them off. You're, you're How he gets in the school, I don't know. <laughs> but Wade has magic powers. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to pinpoint, I think, what was notable for me. I remember the day I started watching it. It was, like, a rainy day. Um, and, like, I had heard about Kim Possible. And, like, I wasn't huge on Disney Channel because I think at that time I was thinking there was some kind of rivalry between Nick and Disney Channel. So, therefore, for some reason I was on the Nick side. Like, that was, like, a weird thing that I had going on. I was like, I can't watch Disney Channel. Um, they're not the same at all. Uh, and I don't even think they really consider themselves rivals at this point. Um, I must have been... I had to have been no older than 10 or 11. Um, but, yeah, I, I remember watching it, and it was around the time, I think, Sitch and Time had, was coming out or had just come out because, like, they were promoting the crap out of it. Um, and... I think the weird, the, the interesting thing for me is the first thing that drew me in, because the episode I watched had Draken and Shigo in it, it was Shigo. Like, I was obsessed with Shigo. I was like, this chick, this is, like, my favorite. Like, I just, I, their dynamic immediately, like, all of that stuff just got me. And, like, obviously later as I watched the show, I was like, oh, like, Kim and Ron, like, I want them to end up together, and, like, this is the coolest thing. I mean, I don't think I consciously um, realized, like, the sort of like female empowerment that came from it because I was very much like a victim of like the societal way to view female protagonists because I remember the first time I ever read a book that had a female protagonist that I can remember was uh, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials. Again, had to have been around the same age. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, ooh, why would he write from like write about a girl? Like that must have been so annoying for him. And then like me immediately punched myself in the face for saying that because what the heck? But that's the way, you know, I was taught to look at like entertainment media just by all the things that were out there that I was forced to consume. And then Kim Possible comes along and she kicks butt and the guy in the in the show is kind of useless and that's not to say that men as a whole are useless. It's just really nice to see the girl constantly having to save the dude for once. Um, but also... And he doesn't get the credit either. Like, it's not one of those annoying... Yeah, they're not like, like, oh, like, you do all the stuff and the audience knows that, but nobody else is going... Like, there's no tongue-in-cheek irony yeah. in that way. And the nice thing, too, is that she also... Her and Ron do also get to be partners as well. Like, yes, she's saving his, his butt a lot, but she you know they also work together and he does sometimes save the day like you know she keeps him around for a reason um so it's got the best of both worlds i think with that the the feminist tones and that's obviously not the reason i watched it when i was a kid because young me was stupid um although i was a big fan of shigo so i think part of me was drawn into like the idea of a female and then like fighting the like a female villain like, that's right. really cool when you've got evenly matched sort of, like, female rivalry, like, not over a dude or a cheerleading squad, but because they both know, like, Krav Maga and they're going to kick each other's butts over this, like, nuclear weapon. Like, that was really cool to me. Um, it's pretty great. So, yeah. And, I mean, obviously then, like, I think the reason I watched it as a kid was because, like, the action and, like, I wanted Kim and Ron to end up together. And, you know, it's actually a really funny show. Um we talked about that. You wouldn't know this because that was on the deleted 
version of this podcast. One of, one of, the, deleted one of the deleted versions of this podcast. But we talked about how funny this show is. Like, ridiculously funny. Like, the dialogue is ridiculously funny like, for so an animated funny. show. Um, it's just, especially for a Disney show, like, it's just, it's so clever. And it's never, like, stupid. Like, the show is just, it's a very smart show. We said this a lot again on the last um version of this podcast the law lo- the lost tapes of this podcast um but this is a very this is like the most post buffy show you're gonna find i think minus something that's like super meta i don't know cora is uh, like is like something that wouldn't have happened if kim possible didn't happen if buffy didn't happen um and it has very similar dialogue to buffy i think if you go back and look at it like very 90s late 90s even like early 2000s like slang and jargon and they made up their own stuff too like the so the drama became like a thing like that kids would like that people would say from this show um so it was just it was it's a very i don't want to even say post whedon because it doesn't do like the postmodern kind of meta stuff that buffy does but it it's it's got the same kind of funny dialogue very similar He's premise yeah very similar premise um yeah, that's probably the closest it gets to being a, a Whedon esque show is the fact that they're they both like feature a cheerleader character who's like fighting against the cheerleader stereotype. Not like knowingly fighting against the cheerleader, but that right. like that's built into the, the show. But um this is one of the many times that I have and will continue to tell you guys to watch Buffy if you haven't. But and I know for a fact that was probably before most of your times. <laughs> So go on Netflix and watch it because it's on Netflix. Worth it. Um, yeah, I mean that's 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 like the notable stuff for me. Back then, now I recognize it for all the awesome stuff it is. Like even more awesome stuff. Um, like Kim Possible has allowed us to have so much. Like it's one of those shows that like it is like it is a mark of its time, and then also is allowed like and like you said, you know, have shows like Cora. Like, it's paved the way. Yeah. Yeah, it for sure has. It's also super unique to its time. Like, yeah, there really wasn't I've... anything like it during those four years that it ran, which is interesting because usually you see copycat shows, and there really wasn't any. Well, and there's nothing really like it now either. Yeah, like, no. Pop, it's one of those weird transition shows where we have, like, and it was really one of the only cartoons Disney, Disney had going on at that time. Like, it was, like, Kim Possible was the only cartoon Disney Channel had, like, it was Kim Possible and Hannah Montana and, like, Phil of the Future. Like, that's what even, was on TV. This was even, like, Kim Possible was even before Hannah Montana, though, I think. Like, this was, like, I, There was, like, a little a, bit of overlap. Yeah, there was but, a little yeah, bit of overlap at the end, but Kim Possible was from such a unique time in Disney Channel's life that I think it wasn't sure what it was doing, and it was like, sure, let's try this. Because, again, I think it was one of those things where it was, like, the first time they tried to do a show that kind of, like, would be a Nick show, like a Nicktoons type deal. Like, you think of Kim Possible in that context... You kind probably of like Cartoon Network. Even. Yeah, you probably wouldn't have thought of Disney Channel and like you know, that paid off really well for them because that became one of their most iconic shows. Um, I think of that time period. And like their their follow up attempts with animation weren't nearly as successful. Like I liked American Dragon. Ever yeah, watched Phineas right. and Verb. Um, but nothing was like that sort of like trend setting as as Kim Possible was. Um and even today, like we, Core is probably the closest thing we have to something coming close to what Kim Possible uh, did. Um, and even that, like Core is like a sequel show that's got this like even more ingrained mythology in it. Like Kim Possible is very much Monster of the Week uh, comic book show starring a girl. Like, why? <laughs> where are the rest of these shows? Um, right. Maybe Supergirl, but that's not animation. I haven't watched Supergirl. Delaney has been watching Supergirl. It's it's rel- it's very relevant to this though. Yes, that's what I hear. <laughs> like Kim, like Kim, Kim Possible is just such, it's just that tra- it's such a good great transition show of we have we go from like you know there's like the animation that kind of was before Kim Possible was like it wasn't even really Monster of the it Week or you Rob. would yeah it was SpongeBob like there wasn't really a point to it. But then Kim Possible's like, not only is it Monster of the Week, it's still continuous. Like, they, rep- they like, reference things that happened yeah, previously. Yeah, they'll reference stuff that happened, like, three years earlier, like, in a random episode. They'll be like, oh, remember that one time when? Yeah. And you're like, what? No, I don't, but you do. <laughs> and there's, like, these, and they're comic book villains, and there's all these recurring characters, and it's just such a smart 
cartoon and it's just this all everything that just goes in the Kim Possible and just it's super and it's, and it's this it is the superhero it's it's a superhero show it just she, Kim just happens not to have any superpowers yeah Ron kind of gets superpowers at the end but oh my god that was one of the stupider parts of the show I think all right yeah but um they had to give Ron something um yeah but even that and it's cool because you can see the sort of like marvel influence on it too because it's got like the shield analog in there with the um yeah global what is it global, ju- global justice global justice who's who's like director even has an ipad <laughs> she's, so she's a woman which is also great yeah. like um, all the leaders in the show are women it's like and she go like dragon's useless yeah, she, no, like, Draken, like, that's that's one of the best dynamics I think I've seen of that type in in a show where you've got these two people who, like, because I guess he pays her, like, that's the reason yeah. she hangs around, yeah. uh, is it's, that it's he, her. she's, like, hired muscle, but she, she goes on vacation and Draken's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with her. Yeah, someone. yeah, she, he's, like, he's got these plans, and, like, for the most part, like, they kind of, like, they kind of make sense, like, they, he's, like, smart, he's, like, a scientist, and yeah, she's the high, genius, supposedly. But... Um, yeah, and she's the the hired muscle who like does all the work. But I love the parts where she's like filing her nails in the background, and he's like doing important things. Or like Kim shows up, and she like doesn't even like she's reading a magazine. Like they have such a great dynamic. And it was and what's great about it is that it starts out that way because from the first episode, like it's like and Medias Rays, like the Draken and Shigo. And Kim and Ron are all established characters and their dynamics are established. So in the first episode, you've got, like, Shigo filing her nails in the background while Draken's trying to, like, blow up the moon or something. And, like, Kim and Shigo have, like, their banter, like, already established. Like, that was one of the best things about this show, too, is there was no origin story. Like, there was later. Like, we found out yeah, later. They went back. What happened? But right from the beginning, it was like, this is who I am. This is what I do. And, like, it just went with it for, like two or three seasons before they finally like went back and did an origin story about it and that made it so much better when they did say like talk about where it all came from because it was like funnier and more ironic by that time like seeing the stuff that like sort of was a callback to what was going on now and that like Kim originally was a babysitting service and there was a typo when they tried to call like an <laughs> like it, it was it's great um why in this is all the reasons, I guess, then why you should be watching it now. Um, like, go back and watch it. It's no longer on Netflix. It was for a hot second, which was a great time in my life. I think, not that I support this, but I'm pretty sure it's all on YouTube. Um, because Disney is not as fiendish with taking down their stuff as Viacom is. Which... Also, I think you can still find it on Disney's website. Like, you can still watch episodes. Yeah, you can of watch Marvel. old archive stuff on Disney website. Um, also, R.I.P. Allie's reaction videos. Yes, rip. Oh my gosh, rip. those things got like 90,000 notes on Tumblr, and now they are gone. Rip. Um, thanks, Viacom. To the void. You continue to be great. Um, yeah, like, there's ways to watch it, and like, it's it's out there, and it's really good, and you should watch it if... I'm willing to say that maybe the only reason anyone listening hasn't watched it is because it was before your time. Right, um, and you should definitely go back 100% and watch it. Yeah, good old 2005. Um, this was one of the better parts of 2005. This and um, <laughs> season one of Doctor Who. <laughs> yes. Um, so Delaney brought this up, so maybe you've got more to, to say on this than I do, but has there been sort of a dip um, in female representation in animation since uh, Kim Possible ended, do you think? I mean, I I think so. It's I mean, like we have Cora, but the time gap between well, Impossible and Cora, <laughs> what? Well, not anymore. Yeah, no. Well, yeah, right. Like the time gap between Impossible and Cora is kind of substantial. It's it's like four years. Yeah, something like that. Five years. Two thousand seven. And there really isn't. And also, a lot of people didn't know. And even in two thousand seven, a lot of people didn't know Kim Possible had come back. That there was a final season of Kim Possible. They thought it all yeah. ended after the movie. And, you know, when we talk, and there really there is no show between Kim Possible and Korra. And then also, when we talk about female representation in animation, Korra's it, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's shows like Steven Universe, and we have Powerpuff Girls right now, which I will, okay, I will say. I need to watch Powerpuff, Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls right now is like the Kim Possible 
example of 2005. Like, I power Powerpuff Powerpuff myself. Girls, I need to walk the walk. <laughs> yes, you do. Like, it's Powerpuff Girls currently is like the most feminist show, most feminist animated cartoon out there right now. Like it's up like feminist in the way like that. Like, well, Steven Universe is obviously feminist, but there are Steven Universe does more things than just. And that um, also uh, like the I guess the one drawback to that is that it is still starring a dude. Yeah, that's the thing. Universe. Steven, like, yes, of course it's yeah it's Steven like Steven is the main character and it's all from his perspective. Of course, Steven Universe is like leaps and bounds progressive, about, and like on every note. Yeah. So right now we have Steven Universe and. Uh, the Powerpuff Girls, which Powerpuff Girls, like, which, when I actually drew up this outline, Powerpuff Girls hadn't come out yet. Like, it hadn't rebooted. So, you know, in light of that, Powerpuff Girls is, like, it right now, honestly. Mm. I need to watch that. <laughs> okay. False network. advertising. Um, uh, but it's it's really, interesting, it's, though, it's like, do you, do you think, then, because you mentioned that there's, like, analogs with this and Supergirl, um... Do you think there's an importance then to have this representation in animation versus live action? Since it seems like live action did pick up the slack. Like you've got Black Widow, who could use a lot more representation, yeah. by the way. We have and like Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones, great stuff. Supergirl, um, you've got, you know, you, Daredevil is still about a dude, but there's, you know, some Electra. good, good mm-hmm. female characters in that. Um, yeah, like live action is kind of, Star Wars. Um, you know, like, oh, Star Wars. I was like, there's yes. a big one I'm missing. Star Wars. Um, Star Wars, literal Star Wars. Um, literal. you know that stuff's picking up the slack, but you know, the, I guess the pro. I guess t- I'm answering my own question a little bit is because animation is, as they said when they were trying to get core developed, it's like a guys, it's like a boys club. It's like you know, whether it's true or not, networks think the only people watching animation are boys, unless it's something specifically tailored towards girls. Ignoring the fact that Kim Possible ran for four years and was, like, one of the most successful shows on Disney Channel. Um, So, I guess then the question is, what is the benefit to having representation and feminism in the animated show versus um, live action? Well, I think I don't like, expect you to have an answer, but we'll talk about well, it. <laughs> well, well, you know, my thing is like, like from my personal experience and, po- and probably your personal experience too. You start. I mean, we all start consuming media at such a young age, I eat especially it. now. Our like, the gen- like the generation girl. Like, okay, I sound really old. Like, okay, I'm. Like, you sound old. I'm like four years older than I know her. By you know, the well, way, I'm so however to- old she sounds, I know. Well, well, no, what I'm about to older. say is that like. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But what I meant is like, you know, the generation growing up right now who's like, I'm, I'm talking like Post kindergarten through the fifth grade. You were born in 2000. Uh, yeah. Not, not I you. Wasn't. Not you. I mean, you as in yeah. the people you're talking you, to. I'm, po- I'm pointing at you, listeners. If you're, I, you're probably you're born you outside were, the 90s. Some of you. Yes. A lot of you. <laughs> like you can, you start, especially this, that generation is consuming media at such a younger age than even me or you. And you really your first media as a kid is you watch cartoons, you watch animation. That, that's what you watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I mean, I grew up watching a lot of like live action stuff too. But like, you really that's really what because you, your your parents like sit you down in front of the TV and you're like watch some cartoons, and because that's what they and that's what's on like kids networks and stuff. When and I so, was a kid, we actually didn't even have a SpongeBob yet. That's I'm just ooh. throwing that out there. I remember when SpongeBob started. That's how old I am. <laughs> Aging and stuff a little bit. I remember but watching like, the first episode. <laughs> wow. It's like we start watching like these shows so early and when you're a six year old girl and you're watching all these shows and not a single one of them's main character is a girl. Yeah. Or some of them don't even have female characters in it. Like, like everyone on Tumblr seems to love Clarence. I've seen several episodes of Clarence and I'm like, there is not a female main character. I'm Google <laughs> like, this. Like I don't They're keep up guys. with what the kids are. Oh, I've never seen this. What is this? They do all look like dudes. <laughs> yeah, no, Clarence is like... No, Clarence is like... He's kind of like a Steven-ish like character. Like, he, he seems mm-hmm. fine, but like, he, like... There are no girls in this show. Yeah. And... It's... Like, we have to have the... Especially from a young age. Like, you need... Like, it looks like Powerpuff Girls is so great. Like, you know, when, back when Powerpuff Girls was originally airing, and my, the reboot of Powerpuff Girls is even more so, like... Like, amazing like, you have to have these role models and you have to be able to like see yourself like on tv and 
Yeah. And that and that's what's so great about Kim is like and what and what Kim does also is, you know, these ideas about like it's not that Kim's not like other girls, it's Kim's a cheerleader and like TM. you can be a cheerleader and be super cool. Like it doesn't matter, you can do whatever you want. She's like, super cool because she is a cheerleader because she used yeah. her cheerleading skills in her first mission to like rescue yeah. the guys that she was saving. You can do whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And yeah. it's and and that's why it is so important to have these, especially animated characters, especially since we can kind of, there's, kind you can kind of, there are some things you can do in animation that you can't do in live action simply from, like, the physics of it. <laughs> you you know. can have characters do things that are, like, that you just can't have to be, I mean, granted, we have CGI, but still, like, you really can't, that's which, expected. again, is actually <laughs> animation that's not real, for the record. Though Dylan will not let me use that as an argument to talk about video games on this podcast, because he oh. says that's technically rendering. Which oh my god would probably make a renderer really angry to hear <laughs> they, they're not considered animators, probably. but um probably. yeah no and yeah that's the thing is is like you sit down like your kids are probably watching SpongeBob or your kids you guys don't have kids kids in general are sitting down and watching SpongeBob or they're watching maybe Steven Universe now because that's a good thing that's happening even though it still does have a, a male lead um. What else? What other cartoons are there? <laughs> I'm so Wars out of it. It does have a female main character. And that show's cute and great. And I haven't finished it. So Disney, that's a Disney show also. Star and Wars that's the thing too, movie. I guess, with this. It's not even just that this had a female main character. It's that it was a it was a female-led show that was like an action show. And it was a really smart action show. And like her main nemesis was another woman who like was equally like mentally and physically matched as to her if not like more so her both her parents were like scientists mom and dad were like crazy smart scientists and like nobody ever really remarks on the fact that she's a girl like nobody cares nobody makes a comment about it and the guy that is her sidekick that she's constantly like pulling a damsel in distress move on because like he keeps needing to get saved because he messes up like you know it's 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 a lot of things rolled up into one one show that that worked so well and we're like hitting all these great points that we needed to hit um and it ran for so long and it was so great and it was so marketable for Disney and it was so popular and then like animation kind of like forgot that it existed and didn't really follow its lead um and Cora you know is really good like female lead bisexual characters like good stuff however there was still you know some not great stuff in it too as far as representation because besides Kor and Asami it was like and Lynn it was like a bunch of dudes but yeah you know it, we're, we're we're getting there <laughs> working on it this is we have to we have to we have to look back uh at stuff like Kim Possible to say this is what we should be doing in the future um we talked a lot about, oh my god, I thought there was an ant on me. I felt like something oh. like on my arm. There's ants around me. If you listen to the Archer podcast, you will know I battled a centipede during that. I got a lot of bugs in my basement. So, if I freak out, that's why. That was waging war, basically. Oh my god. And, like, it's against everything I stand for to hurt a bug. So, like, I just kind of curl up in a ball away from them. Um, yet they still want to be my friend. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, Kim Possible ran for three seasons of like 20 something. Actually, I stand corrected. The last season was 14 episodes. This just doesn't make any sense. The first season was 21 episodes. The second season was 30 episodes. The third season was 14 episodes. That's well, no weird. one knew the. Well, the, four, the, the fourth season, season was, was 22 episodes. Like, oh. I didn't even know it was that many episodes in the fourth season. Yeah. It was crazy. Holy crap. Um, so, yeah. Um, ran for three seasons. There was a. I think it was season two was. Um, Sitchin time? I think so, yes. It was, like, right in the middle of the series. It was um, a Disney Channel original movie, if you remember those. I think Cadet Kelly is still on Netflix. That's one of the good ones. And Kim Possible Uh, is in it, technically. Um, Yes. Christy Carlson Romano is in that. Um, So, Sitchin time is, like, even if I, like... Out of all the Kim Possible episodes, I'd say Sitch and Dime is collectively my favorite, even though you really shouldn't count movies in that because they, like, follow a different, like, formula than regular episodes. But that was such a great episode, sequence of episodes, um, mo- slash movie, um, where <laughs> they did uh, they did time travel because everyone does time travel at some point. They managed to make it work within Kim Possible's world. 
Um, I'm not a huge fan ever of really Monkey Fist and Ron's <laughs> monkey nonsense. Um, well, it's funny they had this one outlet for there to be like crazy stuff in Camp Possible. And it, had, it was just yeah, it was the, the monkey dude. That was their one way to be like, here's all this stuff we can't art. explain. Um, but yeah, they go back in time and it's like a villains kind of grouped together to try and like knock Kim out like before she even started. And they're like, what? You're like they keep losing. They're like, I don't get it. Like how, how does this work? And like, how does she keep winning? This is nonsense. And they separate um, her from Ron because they realize that the two of them together. Yeah. Like the without threat too. Without Ron. Like they, they met, they somehow make it so that they don't meet, I think. Well, they do it. Or do they do it that he... Because he moves away. Yeah, they make... Ron is forced to move to Norway. Yes. Um, So they separate them, and they go back in time to try and figure out the secret to her stuff. And she keeps losing because Ron shows up, like, three seconds after everyone leaves. And she gets, like, locked in the sarcophagus and, like, beat up. And she keeps losing because they, like, realize that Ron and their teamwork was, like, the key to everything. Um... And then they go into the future, because what is a time travel episode without going both directions, um, where Shigo has, like, taken over, um, and it's just great. It's all just, <laughs> it's so, okay. I, I would, normally I hate stuff like this, like time travel episodes and stuff, but it's, it's really good. Um, it's so, like, they go, and this is also where we get the origin, like, before, yeah. like, how it all started, and then, also, it's cute, like, they're, they go from being, like, Kin- like it's before kindergarten they're in preschool and yeah. then it goes all the way it's and then so they're good. in high school um so it's like so we go to so we go through we go through season three which apparently only had 14 episodes um into so the drama which was another disney channel original movie which is my favorite of the movies yeah it was really it was wow. actually supposed to be they were like commissioning it for a big like release like a like a theatrical release movie like they were gonna make a a real big movie out of this and then they ended up not doing that they did that with a few things actually because they were supposed to do that with a a Lilo and Stitch movie a second one and they never did they just released it on like um Disney Channel or something instead but um which if you if you're old podcast listeners you will know that I'm obsessed with Lilo and Stitch um but yeah so the Kim and Ron thing was a thing that um, the creators talked about, uh, Mark McCorkle and Bob Shuley talked about being there from the beginning. Like, they, they knew that, like, they were always going to have them end up together. However, watching the show, you wouldn't know that. Because, no, like, not really. it doesn't come up until, like, they need it to. Like, they're both, like, dating random people and going on dates throughout the entire season. And then kind of towards the end of season three, they, like, floated the idea that Kim was jealous of... Ron's pseudo girlfriend from the martial arts place that I hate. Um, Yamanuchi. Yes. Uh, Ron has like this sort of pseudo. It's a, we'll just call her love interest. I guess that's like the word you use. When... Is her name Yori? Yes. Maybe? I think Yori. Yori? 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 Anyway, okay, he's got this girl so. who's like kind of his girlfriend ish. Like, not his girlfriend, but they like, you know, they were cute together and they're like love interest, and it's like, call me maybe type deal. Um, and they floated the idea in the last couple of episodes that Kim was like kind of jealous of that, and then um, so the drama happens, and suddenly Ron has these like long-standing feelings for Kim <laughs> that like come out. They like retconned a little bit because they were like, oh, like I didn't actually like when she dated all those guys, but I was supportive anyway. Like, no, that's I'll take that. Sure, I'll take it at face value for the sake of my ship. But, yeah, it's like we all shipped it, so it was fine. Like, I'm willing to fine. accept that nonsense reasoning. Also, this is like the only straight ship you'll probably ever hear any of. Oh my god, no, literally Tumblr. I'm... This is like the only straight ship anyone ever, us, Tumblr, anyone will say, like, this is it. Everyone shipped her. I, I, although, I, I, there was a there huge were, I mean, faction Shigo for Shigo and Kim. Like that, and that is a. Uh, that is a fine ship, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, it is a fine ship. But Kim and Ron. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like suddenly this guy voiced by, um, Ricky Ullman, by the way, who was like my really big, like 12 year old Mel crush (laughs) was Ricky Ullman. Um, probably still is. Um, but anyway, Ricky Ullman voices Kyle. I think his name is Kyle. She said, wait, no, the synthodrome. Yeah. Eric. 
Eric. Why do I think it was Kyle? Somebody's Eric. named Kyle. Eric. Somebody on the show's Eric. named Kyle. Eric. Eric. Yeah. So this guy Eric comes along, voiced by Rick Yeoman, and like suddenly Ron's Pretty sure it's super jealous of this guy for whatever reason. Suddenly he's jealous. Whatever. I'm not gonna pick at it. It's finally happening. Um, Kim starts dating him, and it turns out he's like a robot that Draken created to like get inside her head because he was like, "This could, this is like her one weakness or something like that." Which is kind of like the one step back maybe they had with the female representation is that they used sort of like female like teenage hormones and said like, "Oh, this is something a teenage girl would like. This would be her kryptonite." That being said, she does kind of like rally against it at the end. Um, I do think so. The drama had one of the best fight scenes of the show with Kim and Shigo in the at the benefit or wherever they were in the dresses and stuff. Yes, at the aquarium maybe. I don't know. They were in scuba suits. Well, I should have it. rewatched it <laughs> before yeah. we started talking about it. But um, so so the drama happened and Kim and Ron got together and like my life was made. Every child who was born between like 1990 and 1997 like rejoiced. Um, but, so that was supposed to be the end of the series. So Kim and Ron got together at two, junior prom? Junior prom. Um, yeah. And, you know, that was fun and dandy and the show was over. And then they're like, no, we're going to bring it back for one last season for some for reason. For season four. I don't even know if there was like, like there was a call for that, like a petition or they just decided. I don't, it was well, very weird. Is, people literally don't know about it. Like people don't know that there was a fourth season. Yeah, well, the fourth season was released kind of on a, like, this sort of transitionary period for, um, uh, oh, it airs on Disney XD. That's yep. weird. Um, the, to, sort of a transitionary period for Disney Channel, because at the, by this time, American Dragon was out and, and airing, and they kind of changed the way they did their animation and they kind of streamlined the formatting for their animation. Um, so this kind of fell into that category. I do think the fourth season is the weakest. Um, and <clears throat> you will... you Like, I doubt anyone would disagree with that. Or if they do, I, you're wrong. Um, <clears throat> but it dealt with kind of Kim and Ron's senior year. And them being a couple now. Like, that was the one good thing about season four. Is because it was the season of fluff. Like, they... they you just it was got literally to see a it. fan fiction. Yeah, season. it was literally a like, fan fiction season. Um, and it was good because when that happens, normally you think, oh, they're going to break up because they got together and now I'm seeing them past getting together. So obviously that means there's tension and drama ahead. There actually wasn't. They had like one disagreement nope. and it was about like where to go for a date. Um, well, and then like graduation was a struggle. Yeah, yeah that it, was a struggle. They worked but out. Yeah, it wasn't like Carmilla where. Somebody right. got somebody killed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there wasn't any of that. Like, it was um, okay. But yeah, and everything no. kind of changed. Like they changed Kim's outfit was different. Yeah, she had a they car. got a new. They got they, yeah. They like upgrade. They like they decided to do their last little hurrah with everything and like upgrade their outfits. We got to see Wade in real life like constantly now. He's actually really short apparently. Um, he's also like he's ten. Like well, yeah. Um, all the villains kind of got their last little. Um, you know, like, episodes to, like, uh, give them their, like, bows, you know, their curtain calls. Um, apparently Shigo and Draken got together for some reason. <clears throat> they became good. Yeah, which, come on. They helped save the world. Um, yeah, I mean, my one thing with that is be is that Shigo is arguably the only character in the show who doesn't, didn't have a definable sexuality up until that point. Yeah. Everyone else showed interest in this, in the opposite sex. And Shigo, like, had no, nothing to say about guys, girls, whatever. So, like, that could have been a great character that you could have said, all right, well, she can be whatever, you know, you want her to be or need her to be. But nope, apparently she ends up with Draken. A man who's probably, like, 20 years older than her. <laughs> yes, because he's uh, Kim's dad's age. They work together. Yeah, and she goes older than Kim, but she's not that much older than Kim. Um, so, I don't know, that was one of my issues with the... With the 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 second season or series finale, um, you know, and it's one of those things. It's like, did they jump the shark a little bit? Maybe, but they also made the joke about that in the first episode, where Ron says, like, Ron's having these bad dreams that, like, him and Kim broke up, and then one of the dreams he had was that he jumped over a shark, 
and he asked if that really happened and it was like oh we definitely jumped over the shark but we're gonna do this anyway because it's happening and you know i can't complain because who doesn't love fluff um and they weren't and they were it's not like they were even bad episodes like no. they were just still typical kim possible they were just like together. it was just it was a very it was a different dynamic to get used to but at the same time like you've been waiting forever to get to see that dynamic so i wasn't gonna wasn't gonna complain too much about it and i watched it pretty religiously um i'm sorry i'm watching this ant try to crawl up the wall and if they learn how to crawl up the walls like i'm done it's the end (laughs) this is the end all right so um i don't know did you did you have any sort of major complaints or major um sort of jubilations with the fourth season that was apparently way longer than i thought it was (laughs) Well, like, when I was, like, at the time, I was, like, oh, my God, in heaven for the fourth season of Impossible, like, watching it, I was, like, oh, my God, this is everything my, like, 14-year-old heart could hope for. I don't even remember how old I was when the fourth season happened, but, like, however old I was, like, literally life made. Of course, looking back, it was, like, literally the fan fiction season, which is why I loved it. Mm-hmm. And it was just, I mean, it was different. I mean, it was, they got to do, they did, they did kind of, like, fun, different things that they never really did before. Like, they explored, like, the twins a little bit more. Oh yeah, they kind of got bigger and and cuz they kind of became way like the Wade character too a little bit. Well, they got to go to, they got bumped a grade to yeah. so they were in high school. Yeah. And the yeah, and there was even like stuff with Wade too now that he was like out in the world like he had and his And he had like a crush on Monique voiced by Raven. Um Yeah, I mean they explored things that you know like they basically got their chance to do like last things that they wanted to do and like basically could do whatever they want because it was the last season so you know they changed the outfits like upgraded a lot of the characters um didn't luckily they didn't do anything like frustrating like play with the backstory and like entirely retcon something or um anything like that so yeah it's like it's it's there about the fourth season it's there and it's nice on a rainy day like it didn't have to happen but the show isn't lesser because it no happened. it's definitely not because it keeps all the all the things that was good about it in there even with kim and ron being in a relationship because you think that would be the number one thing that would kind of like degrade the the female representation or the feminism of it because what kind of dynamic like what kind of strange dynamic would that create for them like would that turn their interactions into like like something different and no it really didn't change much like ron was still an idiot kim was still saving him and still being annoyed about having to save him even though like he was her boyfriend um it was pretty good like none of that really changed there was an episode where that yori I think that was her name. Yeah, you're Where right. Ron's, like, maybe pseudo-girlfriend from the martial arts place comes back, and, like, Kim's like, you need to tell her that we're dating. Um, and you'd think that, like, that jealousy stuff would be annoying, but no, it was really funny. <laughs> well, it's really funny giving Kim's, char- Kim's character, because it's like, how could Kim Possible be jealous yeah, of anything? Like, like, who doesn't want to be Kim Possible? Yeah, like, no, it was great seeing Kim, like, legitimately jealous like that, and it was kind of funny, and, like, I think it was, like, Ron even found it, like, like, what, you're jealous? Um, so, yeah, and, like, they, yeah, they didn't ruin the dynamic, they didn't ruin the characters, nobody was out of character, which is the other big thing that when you, when you have two long-term characters get together. Um, so, yeah, it's there, watch it on a rainy day if you're, like, here for some ship and fluff, um, and, yeah. That's that's what I have to say about that. Um, so this is like a lightning-ish round, and I say that because like it's not going to go fast because I can't think this fast. <laughs> um, but Delaney, what is your favorite character? Who is your favorite? Oh, character? Why did I say oh what? Oh god! I first time we did this, and I was like, I don't know. Um, I have mine. I I mean I, we know we know yours. <laughs> it just I guess it's probably like Ouch. it's hard. It's like how do I pick between Kim and Ron? Like how do you pick? Well, I think they're at the very time, different characters. Yeah. Well, I don't know because they're both so great, though. Yeah. And I think at the, I think at the time my favorite character was Ron. Mm-hmm. But I think looking back, like, who was my favorite villain? That's um, the that's the next question. Hold the on. Next question. Okay, I'll, God, I'll, I'll, I'll read hold the that outline. I think um, I was favorite, looking at the outline. I my favorite that character is Shigo because I just love Shigo. Oh, no, it's Rufus. Rufus is my favorite character. Yeah. Oh, we didn't even talk about Rufus this whole time. Wow. The naked mole rap, guys. Google it. 
Um, yeah, she goes my favorite character for sure. She was like the first thing I saw when I watched Kim Possible. I like imprinted on her. <laughs> She's mine. <laughs> I might have a crush on Chico. Who knows? I mean, I I probably have a crush on Chico. Crush on an yeah. animated character. It's fine though. Who doesn't? Um, yeah. Chico. Next question is favorite villain. Chico also happens to be my favorite villain. Um, Draken's a close second. <laughs> Draken is so, like Draken is just so unbelievably lame that I adore him. Oh man. Like, just, he's such a dork. Like I know, like he is just the lamest, and I love him. But he's like, oh. and it's great because he's like the stereotypical like Lex Luthor, like mad scientist. But he's such a like comic book dork. Like this was a kid who got like probably like he. I think he talks about getting like like he like was a loner kid, and like his mom, he was like a mama's boy and stuff. Like he's just a a dorky dude. Like, with he's like blue, like yeah, he's FedEx blue. He they like explain why he was blue. So good because <laughs> for like, like Kim's dad calls him Drew. Yeah, Drew Lipsky. Yeah, Drew Lipsky. Lipsky. Um, yeah, they explained it in an episode why he's blue because nobody talked about it for like two seasons. <laughs> the fact that he just happened to be blue. <laughs> um, favorite episode. Doctor Dementor is pretty great too. He is equally as t- terrible as Dragon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Favorite episode. Oh, Lord. Oh, like what's I can't remember the name of the episode. I'm trying to find it right now. Uh, it's when they go down to visit um, Kim's grandma. Oh in, like, yes, the lemon bars. Yeah, in the lemon <laughs> bars. That was a good one. I forget the name of the episode, but I like the one with the baby bots. And then yes. she had to go to the talent show. After that, I love that episode. Um, but I also love a Sitch in Time, but that one doesn't count because it's a movie. Like, I love. Um, when they go and it's like when like the episode the naked mole rat happens, mm-hmm. solid episode. And then also like when I think I don't think no this isn't the same episode, but when a uh, they Rufus has to pretend to be a dog, like they put him in a dog show. Yes, yeah, that was like, the thing that happened. So good. Um, favorite between the two movie. Well, I guess we'll count graduation as a movie too. So between the three movies, deaf. So the drama. So the drama made my life. Also, Kim's super suit. Yeah, Amazing. Sweet. I still love uh, Stitch in Time. I keep wanting to say Stitch in Time um, because it's just so great. <laughs> I love it. Like, I never get tired of it and I love watching it. Um, and I also, I just, they're all, the, good. they're just all good. I don't know. As much as I hate time travel stuff because I think it's always explained stupidly, I have a huge thing for time travel episodes because I love at the end when you're back at the, where the episode started. Like, for whatever reason, like, that just gets me. I love that stuff. Um, so this was, like, a thing, like, you know, when we were younger on Tumblr, or even before Tumblr, I guess, in the, in the time of forums and threads, um, there would be, like, oh, who would you cast in the live-action version of this? Um, I know at least one, like, for whatever reason, I just have this very strong image of Zachary Levi as Dr. Draken. (laughs) Um... I don't know if I have anyone else. I feel like Jennifer Lawrence is, like, the go-to to to say for a character like Kim. Yes, I agree. Uh, I don't know. Do you have anyone that you you would cast in a fan casting? I'm trying to figure out who she, like, who would be she go. No, who's, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Okay, okay. see, I was, I was thinking Scarlett Johansson, but I I wasn't sure. So, okay, I'm glad we're in agreement. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson, for sure, she go. Yeah, that would be cool. I don't know. I, I it's kind of fun to cast fan cast stuff, um, and Kim Possible would be like kind of a. It would be an interesting live action movie to see because it's so campy. It's so campy. Um, like their outfits, it'd be so funny. Like, and the names, Kim Possible, Ron Stoppable, like, yeah. which I love the joke on Tumblr now that people are like, you know, when they get married, she's gonna end up being Kim Stoppable. But he's probably going to take her name. (laughs) Or it'd be like, Kim Possible, hyphen, stoppable. It's like, what message is that sending? Yeah, for real. (laughs) Come on now. Um, Yeah, basically just Kim Possible is the stuff, man. It's Um, the best. And it just, uh, it just, it's, it's, honestly, it's like, I mean, we're pretty removed from it right now. Like, it's 2016. This this is like, might be some rose-colored lenses, I guess, looking back at it. But it's such a great show and it aged well, really well talking about it for a really long time i feel like like you know in 10 more years talking about kim possible 
Yeah, to like, remind all you kids out there that Kim Possible is a thing. <laughs> because so, uh, it's been um they they used to have Kim Possible at Epcot. There was like this game that yeah. you could play where you go around the park and like do these missions with her communicator and stuff and stop Draken from doing something. And they replaced it with Phineas and Verb now, so it's like we're phasing out Kim Possible, but I will never forget. Never. Like you still, and I'll still hear somebody with like a communicator, like ringtone. Do 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 do. I'm like, it's my it? text tone. I need it. Okay. The naked mole rap was my ringtone throughout middle school. It was pretty great. Um, yeah. So we might do some more of these sort of retrospectives, kind of like how Dylan and I do a bunch of res- retrospectives on Pixar. I don't know uh, if we can. I know Sam was really into Danny Phantom. So she might hop on one of those. Sam would murder us to see Danny Phantom without her. Yeah, she would probably basically. flip. Um, I don't know. Did you? Did anyone else watch American Dragon? Is that just? I mean, me? I did. You did? Did you I watch did. the whole I watched, thing? Yes. Okay, so we can do that then too. I don't know if any. Allie might have. If Allie I'm ever gets on these, I'm pretty sure I've seen all of. It. I've seen. I think I Sam might have watched it too. I can Brit. Certainty, I've seen the majority of it. I think Brit also might have watched it. But anyway, point is, we have enough here that we can go through some of these. Um. I'm trying to think of others we can do, because obviously Spongebob is not something I want to broach at all, even though I, as I mentioned, was there. And one day, this will be a huge feat, and people will be like, what? When I say, I watched the first episode of Spongebob when it aired. Because that show is not going anywhere. Um, we could do Spongebob and just talk about, like, the, 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 the first episodes. Season. It's interesting, because Sam was talking about how you could consider Spongebob a work of surrealist art, so... <laughs> I'd like to have yes. that discussion. Um, Fairly yes. Odd Parents is another one that was really good in its early seasons, and then except now it needs to die. Yeah, no, it needs. To... Yeah, they did a live action movie. They did the one thing they weren't supposed to do. Like I'm allowed to fan cast, you know, live action stuff for these animated shows, but you can't actually make it an anima- yeah, right, live actually... action version. That's not how this works. Um, no. Uh, what else? I think that's. I don't know. We'll think of more. Maybe if you have any that you. That you watched back in the good old day. Rugrats. Rugrats. All grown up. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy so, Neutron. Jimmy Neutron. Okay, so we've got a bunch that we could do. Um, but if you have ones that you want to hear or uh, think should be done that we didn't name, you know, send it Dylan's way and hopefully he will tell me, remember to tell me. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so you can find all the info on this podcast at overlyanimated.com. Support us via our Patreon at patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Thanks to our current patrons, Shana, Mitch, Cordell, Beatriz, Nate, Andy, Jamie, Rachel, John, Ryan, Catherine, a.k.a. Haina, if you're Mitch Cordell, University, Beatrix, The Strange, Nathan Villian, Buzz Lightyear, Mailman, Rachel Rose, Johnny Bravo, Brian, Cookie Cat. It wasn't obvious. I was reading those off the list. Um, so, yeah. Uh, look for more of these, hopefully, maybe. Um, hopefully you've heard this version of the podcast after our 50 <laughs> attempts. And go watch Kim Possible if you haven't watched it or haven't right watched now. it in a long time. Um, or only and seen tell us your favorite characters, your favorite episodes. Like, why do you love Kim Possible? Yeah, send that stuff. I, I say send that stuff Dylan's way. You can send it my way. I'm on Twitter at Melmoy and on Tumblr uh, at themelmoy.com because I stole my own handle from myself and I lost the password to get into that Tumblr account. It's very tragic. <laughs> so it's quite tragic. Everything else on uh, social media, I am Melmoy, so it doesn't really make sense. But yeah, so send that to me. Send that to Delaney, who's also got Guru, Guru Korsami. Is that you? Guru Korsami on Tumblr and Delbury on Twitter, which they'll be all attached on social media. Y'all know where to find us. Yeah, so... Yeah, uh, let us know and uh, listen some more and adios.